Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Whenever you are connecting to this session, I welcome you to the first, the one and only, I'm blocked, therefore I write. An online workshop in podcast format that belongs to the Writing to Heal project and which I hope will help all of you to heal your relationship with your writing and your creative process overall. My name is Maya and I am a writer, as all of you, I presume, and I will try to set a light upon one of the greatest problems which every writer in the world suffers, have suffered or will suffer at a certain point of their life. I'm talking about the writer's block. It's terrifying, isn't it? Oh my god. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I don't have any final solution. I wish I had. In fact, I'm still trying to figure out who am I as a writer, fighting not to feel a fraud every time I set myself uh, in front of my laptop and emptiness fills the screen. Um, I struggle a lot every day with feeling physically incapable to translate the Nobel Prize winner ideas that flow inside my head into written words. It is so frustrating and demolishing. I usually find myself completely exhausted due to the huge effort that has to be done to avoid any intrusive thoughts getting between my dreams and I. <laughs> as, as becoming a writer wasn't difficult enough to write, I have to deal with my own brain trying to sabotage me. It is absolutely fantastic. But, well, um, I hope not, honestly, but in case you have ever felt this way, I want you to know that you are not alone, trust me. And listen to me when I say that the imposter syndrome is more than common among us writers. I'm, I'm not telling this because I consider this platform a free psychologist or anything, but I want you to consider you and me completely equals. I am a writer without a clue. We are all writers with no clue. And together we will see what can be done to clear out our fears. So, uh, what will our procedure be? Well, first of all, we need to leave any feeling of anxiety completely behind. One of the greatest barriers a writer needs to overcome is precisely the angsty feeling which comes with the mere idea of writing. The writer's block and anxiety feed each other, so we have to divorce them. For that, I will ask you to be in a place where you feel at peace, and especially where you can listen to yourself. I know it's not easy, but it is important for today's session. We need a quiet surrounding where no distractions can intervene in the process of letting ourselves go from the restriction we have tied ourselves with. Once you are set, I need you to breathe, shake, move around, run, jump, shout as loud as your lungs allow to, or whatever activity which usually helps you relax and earn motivation. If you need to get a mirror and a screen to your reflection that you are the greatest writer of your generation, come and go and do it. If you need to pause this recording, you are more than welcome to do so. Just come back when you are ready. So, are you done? Do you feel better now? Great. Now, let's start. Okay, <clears throat> sorry. If this was an on live workshop, we will have probably worked in a different way, but we need to attach to the means we have. So, what I will, be, what I will do during the rest of the session is provide you with different exercises that I have been suggested by teachers, other writers or colleagues when dealing with this issue. This is a compilation which I invite you to complete in the comments section or with other people or however you would prefer to do. So, um, in case you have any tool that may be useful for all of us, I will be so grateful if you help me with this, actually. Um, it is funny or ironic at least. Uh, that most of the writers that I've met insist on the fact that the only solution to the block is writing. And that, 
that infuriates me so much whenever I listen to it because it I see myself on the verge of saying like oh wow genius as if that wasn't the problem in the first place but poor me and poor ego uh, the thing is that they are completely right uh, there is no way of escaping the writer's block if you don't write However, there are different practices we can start with that are much less stressful than attempting to write our own Ulysses. And that is what we are going to do today. Last December, I had the opportunity to sign up for a masterclass that the Spanish writer Sara Mesa led. She insisted on the urgency of stopping self pitying and starting to actually write. She slapped us in our faces when she said that it is not true that we don't have time to write. She said, if you really want this, you will find it. And I cannot argue with that. <laughs> However, she went on saying that she understood how difficult it is sometimes to look for something worthy to write about. And here is when she suggested one of the most amusing exercises that I have heard of. It is one of my favorites, actually, and it consists on paying close attention to conversations between, between strangers. Take details, try to follow the conversation in your head. Where does these people come from? What is the story which surrounds the discussion? Then write it in a piece of paper. Oh, it's important that I do not forget to tell that I want you to be aware of the fact that there is no need of showing anyone those pieces of text. As I've said before, we are in our, in our private places, in our dear comfort zone, and these words are for yourself and your healing process. These exercises are meant to let ourselves go and just write. Do not judge the quality, neither the form or the aesthetics. Just write. This is for fun. Okay? So, our next exercise um, is the one with the jar. The jar is your solution when you want to write a story but your brain refuses to work as it should. There is no mystery in it actually. It consists on filling it with as much pieces of paper as you may prefer. In each paper you should jot down different words of any kind. Animals, feelings, places, things you might be scared of, things that surprise you, weird things, common things, food, drinks, you understand. You shall keep that jar, so anytime you require services, you just need to open it, take three of these papers and fill a story from them. A third exercise is related to rewriting. Have you ever read any story which reminded you of a classical myth or a story previously written? I bet you have, so why wouldn't you try it as well? Take your favorite book, poem, short story, film or TV show, it doesn't matter and recreate it. What if sense and sensibility took place in the present, or even better, in the future? Could we fight a Hamlet on Mars? How will the meeting between Harold Bloom and Ulysses be? You may look for a different point of view, for example. How did Poe Scott felt, uh, feel when he saw himself trapped in the wall? There are millions of secondary characters demanding our attention. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you listen to them? It would be interesting, as well, try to do so with a song, for example. Take Roxanne, by the police. Who is she, really? We don't know anything about her except for what Sting tells us. Wouldn't it be interesting to know her side of the story? And, uh, well, I, bring, I have brought one last but not least exercise, uh, which I believe will amuse you as well. It relates to our senses touch, smell and taste especially, I invite you to invite some friends over to do this. I bet it will be much more fun. I propose each of you to choose a thing or multiple things with a particular texture, smell or taste, uh, get them in a box and then with your eyes completely, completely shut, take one of them. Does the touch of it remind you of anything? What memories are brought up when you smell that? Does the taste of it take you to a different place? Take notes of your feelings. It is important to write down everything that you may come up with. The idea is to, sept 
to set up your subconscious and to set free any idea which may be caged for any reason. And well, um, that will be all. And well, you know, as I've said, these are not magic formulas uh, that will somehow cure your blog, but they may work as a motivation. Think of these exercises as a game where the important thing is to enjoy the process and hopefully there might be a brilliant idea behind those tiny silly texts and I don't know, sometime, some, someday that, that may become a book or a short story or something you are really proud of. And uh, in fact, I will be absolutely delighted to read it someday. So, well, that will be the end of the podcast and the session. Thank you all so much for listening and for being here today. It has been an absolute pleasure. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this as much as I've been. Um, and well, uh, keep on writing, writers. Uh, see you soon.